Good morning, John Hoyt here with Security Tactics. And this week's been an interesting week for a lot of folks, uh, especially folks that are in information security um, with a major compromise uh, with the product and company SolarWinds. And, you know, a lot of people have been affected by this and it's something that is, is difficult to deal with. Um, and just a quick summary of, of what happened, it, you know, it's what's called a supply chain attack. And what that means basically is, um, the, the clever, you know, threat actors did the research and found a company and a product that, um, a lot of, a lot of entities in the U S use, um, a lot of, a lot of folks across the world use. Um, it looks like maybe 18,000 customers or so of theirs were affected. And instead of targeting directly, you know, as the threat actor targeting their, uh, the client or the victim directly, they targeted software that that company uses or those entities use or those organizations use, um, to infiltrate that software, you know, basically embed malicious code, embed, you know, uh, stuff that they could use to um, further their goals. And, you know, what was that? Well, they embedded software so that if you went out and, and downloaded, legitimately downloaded software from SolarWinds, you know, you were doing your updates just like you should be doing. And they were able to infiltrate those updates so that when you downloaded your update, it had infected or, you know, injected code that, um, they could then use to connect back to them, um, command and control back and forth. So, you know, you're running solar winds, you're running your normal software, you're doing your thing with it. Um, and the thing that's interesting about solar winds is it touches a lot of things. So it was, it's clever in their part because it's not just a, a, a one, small scoped type of software. It's something that can touch everything. It can touch all your servers, can touch network equipment, can touch a lot of things. And the purpose is for it to monitor, use it for monitoring and, and uh, backups. We're not, not, well, some backups of network equipment, but basically keep tabs on what's going on from the monitoring side of things. So that way they could use that. And um, when it phones home, they could see what company it was for, and issue commands back and forth to it to do bad things. You know, uh, the other thing about SolarWinds is a lot of times, you know, it needed privileged access to whatever it was talking to. You know, it needed to have admin level uh, privileges to talk to things and connect to them and be able to do all the things it needed to do. You know, at least not, not so much least privilege, unfortunately. And so, um, it was a very, it's a very clever attack, you know, but on their side, because they're not attacking the direct client, they're, they're, you know, kind of going an end around, um, to attack the company that they knew their clients as the targets that they were interested in would download that software. Or, you know, maybe they didn't know, but then once they started phoning in, they're like, oh yeah, these are the ones we're interested in. So, you know, what, what would be, what is the tactic? What is the strategy? If you're downloading your software that you should be doing updates and you're keeping those up up to date just like you should be you know what do you do we know and it's, we know we want to keep up to date because there could be vulnerabilities in our software that could be exploited um and really probably the e i say easy but probably the pra most practical strategy that i could think of is just to make sure that those kind of software, the software that you, you have to use for like the infrastructure and for monitoring and really as much as you could potentially do, restrict what they can connect back out to, you know, so typical environment, you install the software, you know, especially a small to medium business, you know, it, everything can talk to the internet, right? You know, there's no restrictions on outbound connectivity, outbound traffic. Well, in this scenario, say you had solar winds or something like that that was impacted and you were able to download the update. Well, if you had only allowed solar winds, the systems that, that run solar winds to talk to specific things, you could narrow the scope of the, you know, what was command and control. Now, 
they did some clever things to help mask what would look like legitimate command and control back out, but it's still a sound tactic. It's still a sound strategy to um, restrict it. So if you said, hey, no, this solar winds, you cannot talk to anything on the internet. Now you're gonna have to download the updates a different way, right? And you're gonna have to update it a different way. That's fine, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's not as convenient, right? But it definitely would, even if you had loaded a malicious version of the software, you still would, you know, be safer because it was it would not have been able to connect back to the threat actors, the bad guys. So as much as you can, you know, as, as broad as you can do it, especially things like a good example is this, this is a good eye opener for everybody. Um, is to restrict what you allow back out to the internet. Now, how do you do that? You know, it depends. A lot of times, the best way to do that is through a proxy server or some kind of firewall that can act as a proxy server. And, you know, something that you have that you can point the servers to that says, you basically give it like a whitelist of what you, what you allow them to talk to or don't allow them to talk to. So on your servers, you would tell it, hey, go here to try to get out to the internet. You know, don't go, you can't go directly out. You have to go here. And in that case, if you've whitelisted things that you know this is the only things it needs to talk to, like maybe if it's a Windows server, Windows updates. Now that's not easy sometimes because they can go all over, but it is something you have, you could, you know, you can work with, right? It's better than nothing. Um, but you point it at that proxy server and then that's the only thing it can talk to to get updates. Now, sometimes if it's serious enough and critical enough, you just have to do that manually. You'd have to download the updates to something that can talk to the internet and get those and then manually load them on the system. So if you think of a SCADA environment, you know, the best practice is not to allow any of that out. Don't allow any of those systems to talk to the internet, right? And yeah, it sucks because then you have to go manually load the updates and things like that. But it is, you know, quote unquote, air gapped, um, where if anything were to get in, it couldn't get out and less likely things can get in, right? Um, there's probably a lot more things, I mean, just following the best practice for hardening. But in this case, in this scenario, um, use this as an opportunity. If you don't have those things implemented, if you don't have those restrictions, you know, don't let a crisis go to waste. Use this as a time to say, hey, this is a good chance. If we had ha been affected, and if you were affected, here's a good time to say, look, can we do this now? You know, sell this to management. You, they have this, it's in the headlines. It's a big deal, it's a global deal. Um, now's a good time to sell that strategy, sell that tactic. And, you know, it's gonna take some work. It's gonna take some time to implement it. It's not easy. You know, it's not something you just flip on typically. Um, but start with start with these kind of systems. Start with this kind of environment that you can say, look, these for sure, this is a good case where these are a target and we should restrict what it can connect back to. So, you know, it's a tough week for a lot of folks that have to deal with this and having to just go through all the pain and headache of uh, if you were affected, you know, what was impacted, um, redoing all that stuff you know it's it's not fun for for a lot of security uh, groups and a lot of security people out there um solar winds in itself i would say is probably more for large enterprises maybe not as much used for um small to medium folks but but you know maybe i don't know I, i'm not as familiar with it as far as those those type of use cases but but yeah so just block what you can block what you can going outbound um you know, like I said, there's more you could dive into there, but that's a good, that's a good tactic. That's something that you could implement that um, you, it's not, it's not going to cost you really anything. It may, it may, you may cost you, um, if you need a proxy server, there are free proxy servers like Squid. You know, the time to set that up though, it, it's not free, so it does take the time to do it. But anything you buy, you have to do that as well. So, you know, this is something that I would recommend to anybody. Restrict what you can that's gonna go back out to the internet. Anywhere, especially critical things. Um, and use this as an opportunity to, to take advantage of that now 
and implement those those uh, that technique. So, thank you. Um, I hope this is good and, and helpful for for folks. And um, hope you have a good week. And that's it. See you.